Okay, confirmation lesson three. We'll be talking about the second chief part of the catechism. We wrapped up talking about the Ten Commandments, the Law and Gospel, and now we're going to move into the second chief part, which is the the Creed. So now we've we've laid out the law and seen our great need for a Savior, but none of the Ten Commandments tell us anything about the Gospel, anything about Jesus or the cross. So now that we know our great need, we move into the second chief part of the catechism, which is the Creed. The Creed is simply comes from a Latin word credo, which means I believe. The, the creed that we use, all the creeds that we confess in the church are all man-made. They're not in the Bible, but they all are derived from the Bible. So we, so we know that all the teachings that are in the creed, uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and so on and so forth, everything that the creed confesses is actually coming from the Bible. You can see it in the bulletin. So the bulletin that we print out on Sundays, uh, you can look and look over in the margin and see all the different Bible references for every single line of that creed, where it is in the Bible, at least one example of where that teaching of, of the faith is in the Bible. Uh, so you got the Nicene Creed, the, the Apostles Creed, and also the Athanasian Creed, which we say every year on Trinity Sunday. So typically, Nicene Creed goes along with uh, communion services. So we say that all the time at Bethany. The, the Apostles' Creed is used with baptism and usually said in non-communion services. So that's the easiest one to learn and to teach the faith. And so that's the one that's in the catechism. But in the second chief part of the, of the catechism, the creed, we see really who God is and how he creates us, saves us, and continues to provide and preserve us in, in this life. So uh, here's what I'm planning to talk to you about today. So hopefully not Hopefully not too long, not too many things there. Um, so I've covered that the creed isn't man-made. Most of you guys are really good on your quiz. There weren't too many trick questions that, that, that caught you up. There's, uh, there's three articles of the creed. So there's lots of different points, but there's three main articles. And each article is for the three, the three uh, main persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Father is the first part, the Son's the second part, and the Holy Spirit is the third part. And each person of the Trinity is, is credited with one particular piece of salvation. So all of the, all of the Godhead, all, all three persons of the Trinity are certainly involved in every aspect of salvation because it's one God. I know it's confusing, but it's what the Bible says. So we simply confess which, we do, which is what the creed is all about. We simply confess what God has already told us about himself, even and especially when it doesn't make any sense to us. So he says, I'm one God, but there's three persons, and that's the way we, we confess him then. So God the Father, who is primarily credited with creation, but as we learn in the Bible, that he created through the Son. All things were made through him, we learn from John chapter 1. So God creates by speaking, let there be light. Well, when he create, when he says, let there be, there's words coming from God. Those words are in the beginning, as we learned from John 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And that word became flesh in Jesus. So we say all things were made through Jesus. So God the Father spoke and there was light and there was creation, right? So that's just an example of how the whole Trinity is, is working in every chief part of the catechism, but we're really just trying to give some explanation of who each chief part is. So um, we don't worship three gods. Some of you guys missed that. I really want to make sure you get that clear in your minds. One God. One, uh, one God. So three and one. Well, that's a really creative way to do that. So one God, three persons but not three gods. So that's, uh, the, the, there's multiple religions that worship three gods. We say, no, we believe in one God as God reveals himself to us in the Bible. And yet he reveals himself as three different persons. Okay. Um, in the first chief part, and I'll share the screen with you here and we can look at the catechism again. In the first chief part, we're saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures. So God created 
me personally. He made you and everything about you. He made you uh, just the way you are, the way, the way he wanted you to be with all your strengths, with all your weaknesses, with your, even what we, we, what we might consider to be shortcomings about ourselves, we receive them as a gift from our Lord. Uh, to be sure, sin impacts all of us too. So the, the, the fall into sin certainly brings with it certain uh, maybe physical ailments or disabilities and those type things. So sin impacts us. But even then, God is able to work through those for our good. Um, so God creates us and he richly, so he, he's made everything. He's given me all my, my, my body, my reason, and my senses. So my, my ability to think my, and my smell and everything and still takes care of them. Some of you guys missed that on your quiz. God still preserves us today. Even though he created the world 6,000 years ago or so, uh, so we discount where we're confessing here. We don't believe in evolution. That's what the Bible says. God simply created, let there be, and there was, and then there's right away Adam and Eve, and then we have a timeline. The Bible, you can, you can track the, the chronology of the world. When you look at the world, it's like, well, uh, scientists would argue that it's billions and billions and whatever years old. And uh, we would say, well, when Adam and Eve were created, they were created fully functioning humans. They weren't created as like newborn babies. They were created as adults, right? So they looked older than they actually were. So it is with the world. So God creates the world. He speaks into existence. And so, so it is, but he doesn't just abandon the world. He remains with us. He was with Adam and Eve in the garden. He remained with his people, Israel in the old Testament. He continues to be with us uh, every day, providing for us. He causes the rain or the lack of the rain. Um, he, he, he preserves everything in this world and gives us all that we need. As we said, he richly and daily provides all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of mercy. It's especially important for us now as we're experiencing the, the coronavirus and the shutdowns and, and everything with all the fear that's coming around the world is necessarily very, very anxious and scrambling right now, because if you don't have a God in charge, then, then it, we're all just scrambling around trying to squeeze out a few more days of life in this world. What we're confessing is, no, no, God has created this world. He's preserving me now, and he'll call me home when he's ready. And that's not bad. That's actually fantastic. It's better to, to die and be with, to be with him. But right now, as long as he gives us life, we're living in this world and serving others. And every day that he gives us life, he's preserving us. He's defending us against uh, danger and, and evil. So we don't need to fear as though there's something out there that's greater than God, but rather God is even working through the trials to strengthen our faith. And ultimately, he'll even work through death itself to call us back to himself. As we see in the person of Jesus, he worked through death to bring about ultimate good. He worked through Jesus's death to save the world. And so to even our death, as bad as it, it might seem, especially from the world's perspective, God is working through that to call us, call us to heaven. Uh, so yeah, so he's, he continues to be with us and preserve us. The second chief part is regarding, uh, regarding the son. Oh, one, one more thing on the first chief part that, that I want to talk about is suffering. Some of you guys were confused on that. Um, suffering, all suffering that we face in this life is a result of the fall into sin. Adam and Eve fall, uh, falling in the garden, and that same sin is passed down to us. It's called what kind of sin? Original sin. So original sin is the sin that we inherit from Adam and Eve, so we're born with it. And that's the, it causes death and, and, and all kinds of problems in this world. But then there's also the sin that we, that we are active participants in, the sin that we do, we call that active sin. So original sin, and then, uh, or I guess it's uh, actual sin, or actual sin, the sins they actually do. And of actual sin, there's active sin and passive sins. There's sins that I do. And the sins that I commit by not doing the stuff I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to listen to your parents and do what they say. When you don't do it, you're sinning. But you're not doing anything. That's the problem. So you're passively sinning. And sometimes you actively disobey. That's active. So those are both actual sins that we, that we are personally responsible for. There's also original sin that we inherit from, from Adam and Eve. 
all of that together is a cause of our suffering. So we die in this life, we experience tragedy and, and hardship and suffering, all as a result of the fall into sin, this coronavirus, this fallen world, the, the world itself is groaning all because of sin. Now, we also suffer because of our personal sins at times as a result of our actions. So um, if, if you commit, if you, if, God forbid, you steal something or something like that and you get arrested, that's a punishment for your sin. Uh, people who are engaging in, in like serious drug addiction, drug, drug abuse that's destroying their bodies, and then they end up uh, dying as a result of it or catching some disease, we would actually say that that's a a result of uh, of their sin, a punishment of their sin. There's Mandy, my wife, in the back. And in case you guys are wondering, this is a treadmill in the background here. It's kind of bent. It's it's tilted up, so I give more room down here. But it's really heavy, and I can't move it. And this is where I do my recording. So that's what this monster thing is behind me here. Uh, so, so again, so suffering is a result of the fall into sin, but also there are things that we that we experience the the result of. So we're not, not that God is punishing us for our sin. Actually, all the, all the punishment that you and I deserve for our sin has already been poured out on Jesus. He suffered for the sins of the world fully. So we're not punished for our sins, but we do experience the consequences of our sins in this life. And so we'd say suffering is both a result of, of our own actions at times, but then also because of original sin. Now, as we get into the second article of the creed, as you see here, uh, is, is primarily about redemption. So the first article about creation, the second article about redemption, and it's just the basic story of Jesus. It really makes up the bulk of the creed, everything that Jesus has done uh, to save us. He's true God and true man. Now, what, some of you guys were confused on this, so I just want to emphasize that Jesus, whose name means he saves, by the way. So Jesus needed to be both 100% fully God and 100% fully man except without sin. So to be fully man doesn't mean to be sinful because Adam and Eve weren't sinful. So we've fallen. So Jesus is fully man because he was born of Mary, yet conceived by the Holy Spirit. So didn't receive original sin, but it's also fully God. Why does it matter? Well, if he's just a man and not God, and he dies, his, sin, his death doesn't pay for the sins of the whole world. It's just a death like anybody else. You and I are going to die too. That doesn't pay for the sins of others. But because he's fully God, his death actually pays for the sins of the whole world of all times. And it's not just uh, the, the temporal punishment of our sin, but the eternal punishment. Because he's God, he's infinite and, and timeless. He actually suffers all of eternal hell on the cross for us. And in that one moment when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's suffering the full, the full punishment of hell in our place. He can only do that because he's God, but he has to be fully man because he has to take our place in every stage of the way. He was born in the womb. He was, he, he was, he was uh, conceived into the womb, born as a baby, grew up. He faced everything that we face, all the challenges that we face, the trials that we face. Uh, but most importantly, he had to die in the same way that we die. So he's not like Superman and he needed kryptonite or something. No, he actually had to die in the same way that, that we die. That's why it's important that he's, he's both true God and true man at the same time. That's a really key thing in the second chief part. One more thing I want to emphasize here that we don't really get to in the creed itself, but he, the fact that he suffered under Pontius Pilate is huge for us today as people doubt the, the historicity. They, they don't believe that that Jesus actually existed in, in, his, in history, that he was a myth, just like uh, other mythological creatures or, or, um, or like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny and those type things, that we just invented him. Well, no, no. Uh, it's not like we're saying a long time ago in a far off place, like fairy tales begin. No, this says under Pontius Pilate, which is significant because Pontius Pilate is a real person in history in a specific place. So in this creed, we're actually saying our God became man in real human history. Don't believe me? Go and see. And that's what the early Christians were saying. Go ask the people who, who saw it. They're called witnesses, and they died for the faith. They're called martyrs. All the apostles were writing about what they saw. And so we confess a real God coming into, the, coming into our human history in reality. And so that, that one line, suffering or Pontius Pilate, is, is extremely important for us. And then lastly, 
And the third article regarding sanctification, a number of you guys uh, missed a part of this, I want to emphasize. So the third chief part is, is the Holy Spirit's work, sanctification. Sanctify means to make holy. And so when, when, the, when the Holy Spirit is, um, is sanctifying us, the question is, how does he do it? How does God make us holy? Well, all the salvation and holiness that's, that's won on the cross by our Lord Jesus is delivered to us through word and sacrament. So that holiness that, that, that Jesus possesses and won for us is delivered by the Holy Spirit through the, the word. He makes us holy by attaching his word to, to water and, and holy baptism and making us holy. His body and blood. We, that we are able to eat is true body and blood makes us holy. Even the spoken word into our ears, giving us faith, making us holy. We cannot, as the creed says here, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. Because of that original sin I talked about earlier, the original sin that we're born with, I, I can't choose to follow God. None of us can. Our natural tendency is to want to choose sin. I, I want to be evil. My, like we, we naturally want to do the wrong thing. And as, as if we don't, if we're not doing a certain wrong thing, and then it's like a, the cookie jar thing where your parents, if there's just a jar on the counter, you don't really care about it. But when your parents say, Hey, there's cookies in this jar. Don't eat the cookies. All of a sudden you're like, no, I want those cookies. I got to eat those cookies like right now. So uh, our, um, our tendency is to want to choose evil. And as soon as we find out about more evil, we want to go and do that too. Constantly, that's our sinful nature. Only by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit are we able to do anything good, including live a holy life, believe in God. Even for me to, to say, I choose to accept Jesus. I can't say that unless the Holy Spirit's already given me faith in Jesus. I can't, I can't pray to a God I don't already believe in. I can't accept a God that I don't already believe in, right? So that faith is given to us by the Holy Spirit through the word and sacraments. And the, and the sacraments are nothing other but the, the word attached to physical stuff. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So this, the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to work faith in us because I can't, I can't do it myself. He's called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, the, the sacraments, sanctified, made me holy, and kept me in the faith. So he makes me holy and keeps me in the faith. And the same is true for the whole, the whole church. And then at the end, we confess on the last day, he will raise me in, in the church. He forgives all my sins, which is the main point of coming to church to be forgiven along with others because we need forgiveness. And the last day, on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. So we believe in the eternal resurrection on the last day when Jesus returns, we'll all be resurrected. Uh, the final judgment will take place, but we'll be judged on behalf of Christ not because of anything us, but because we've been made holy in Jesus and our bodies and souls will be united and perfected and we'll live eternally uh, in heaven, which really the new earth and heaven will, heaven will descend onto earth, but that's a longer conversation. But uh, we do believe in the final resurrection, that Jesus is coming back. So that's the, that's the, the creed in a nutshell for you guys. I hope it was helpful. Again, the three, the three main chief parts, not three gods, one God and three persons. We talk about the Trinity, one, one and three, and all the ways uh, that, he, that he serves us and saves us.